A developer in southern Utah and actor Kevin Costner are teaming up to build a film studio valued at over $40 million to St. George. The most significant development to come out of St. George Mayor Michelle Randall's State of the City speech to the audience on Tuesday at the Dixie Convention Center is that a local title firm partner, McCray Hepler, made the following pledge in a video played during the event. It's going to be a massive, massive addition to the performing arts industry here in St. George. The Hollywood actor and filmmaker is collaborating with Brett Burgess, president of Development Solutions Group, Inkind, to establish territory film studios on a 500-acre industrial complex close to St. George Regional Airport. A total of 152,650 square feet will be dedicated to two sound studios, an office building, and a production warehouse for set design. The studio's strategy also includes providing public tours. Burgess is unsure of many of the specifics, yet, but it will also feature a restaurant with a Costner themed that will cater. Following the mayor's comments, Burgess told the Salt Lake Tribune, that's kind of Kevin's passion. Costner was so frustrated last year trying to locate a warehouse to film some interior shots for Horizon and American Saga that he became interested in constructing a studio. An estimated $90 million was invested in the St. George economy by the four-part series, which would portray the settlement of the West during the Civil War era. The cast and crew of the show numbered over 400, According to Joyce Kelly, sales manager for the Greater Zion Convention and Tourism Office, who assisted Costner in looking for potential filming locations in southern Utah for the series, Horizon is the largest film production that's ever been filmed in Utah. Costner, by all accounts, fell in love with St. George and indicated interest in establishing a studio there. When Burgess was called in by Greater Zion officials to help Costner locate a temporary location for filming some inside shots, he entered the picture. The studio, according to tourism officials, will be yet another shining star in the economic community of southern Utah. Kelly added that it is desperately needed. There are 4,000 students enrolled in film schools across Utah, and there isn't much of a reason for them to stay here, she stated. After graduating, our pupils are forced to find other employment. With any luck, our students can now graduate and go on to work on further movies at the company. Importantly, the film industry really pays a wage that allows families to survive. The studio is anticipated to begin construction in the fall of next year, upcoming events. Although Territory Studios was the main event during the mayor's speech, it wasn't the only one. A premium movie theater and bowling alley are two of the other upcoming attractions that city officials highlighted, but they didn't elaborate on. They will be constructed close to Desert Color, a sizable master-planned community that is situated just off the Southern Parkway. Randall and Hepler also hinted at other ventures along the parkway, such as Intermountain Desert Color Parkway Emergency Services, a hospital facility that Intermountain Healthcare plans to build on 30 acres approximately one mile east of Interstate 15. A Utah Tech University West Campus and related innovation district are also planned for the airport region. These will be built on 183 acres the university has already acquired with money provided by the legislature. Randall raved about the upcoming opening of Strap Tank, a well-known brew pub that will be situated someplace off Dixie Drive, closer to downtown. In addition, she gave an update on the new $45 million City Hall project, which is now being built at 61 S Main Street. The population of St. George has increased from 13,000 in 1980, when the current City Hall was constructed, to approximately 100,000 now. Randall declared, pure and simple, we've outgrown it. This new building comes with a public parking structure, a lovely plaza, and 4,300 square feet of civic space in addition to giving us adequate space to properly conduct city business today and in the future. Pressing harder on Dixie. Over the years, Dixie has become a well-known namesake in St. George, but it has also generated controversy. The region was dubbed Utah's Dixie, by early settlers who were dispatched by pioneer leader Brigham Young to establish a cotton mission because of its warm climate, which reminded them of the American South.
Some lifelong citizens fiercely oppose the name change of Dixie State University to Utah Tech in July 2022. The word Dixie conjured up thoughts of the Confederacy and white supremacist, according to many who support the change. Opponents countered that the name Dixie paid homage to the region's history. Leaders in St. George seem to belong to the later group. Randall said during her address, Washington City celebrates Cotton Days, Santa Clara has Swiss Days, and Hurricane has Peach Days. Up until now, St. George has no days. Randall declared that the first-ever Dixie Days, an annual celebration that includes a rodeo, art, music, and food, will take place in St. George during the second week of September. A committee has been established to make Dixie Days a cohesive event honoring our common past and a thriving neighborhood that characterizes St. George, Utah, the mayor continued. Randall said, St. George is set on creating an interpretive trail at Pioneer Park that will educate residents and visitors about Native Americans, the early pioneer settlers, and why the area is called Dixie. This will be in keeping with the city's Dixie spirit. Randall's declaration comes a year after the Utah Historic Preservation Office designated Sugarloaf, the massive red sandstone boulder overlooking downtown St. George that bears the word Dixie as a historic site. These days, the National Register of Historic Places has it listed as well. Students from Dixie Stake Academy of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints erected the famous monument more than a century ago, Constructing and Preserving, John Willis, the city manager of St. George, stated in his speech that the quantity of building licenses granted in 2023 was quite uneven. According to him, there were 617 fewer single-family building permits issued this year than there were last year, 836, but there were 416 more multi-family building permits, up from 301. $328.5 million is the total value of the permits that were granted last year. According to Willis, 2024 is going to be a huge year. The total value of the permits that the city issued in January was $77 million. The city manager remarked, It was probably the biggest January we've ever had. Willis pointed out that St. George is conserving water at a rate that is comparable to the city's rapid expansion in both business and population. The city has eliminated 279,000 square feet, or 6.4 acres, of sod since 2022, saving approximately 18 million gallons of water annually. He went on to say that if you look at the whole area and not just the city borders, around 1.1 million acres, or 25 acres, of grass had already been gone. That is an incredible thing and demonstrates what a wonderful community we live in. Enough grass to roll an 18-inch wide Iu Strip of grass from here to Las Vegas and an additional 20 miles, Willis remarked. For years, environmental organizations have complained that people in southern Utah consume excessive amounts of water, and they have chastised government leaders for not doing enough to protect this valuable resource. But according to Willis, the city has increased connections by 200 since 2017 and decreased water consumption by 250 million gallons, or about 767 acre-feet. The municipal manager remarked, That's a credit to everyone who is doing their part.